Hey guys, welcome to today's video. It's another Tutorial Tuesday where we're doing some techniques for beginners. Um, last week we did the sphere, so we finished up with the sphere where we added a cast shadow. Um, I hope that you uh, enjoyed that exercise and you're gonna keep practicing them. I've seen some of them over on the Facebook group. They look really cool, uh, so well done. Make sure we keep layering um, and make sure that we keep adding those values in the darkest areas. But um, I'm gonna do one more exercise today that I want you to practice. Again, that when I first started out, I was uh, practicing a lot of these. I did these quite a lot. Um, and it's just gonna show you a little bit of detail on something and how even if something's dark, it gets darker in the darkest areas and lighter in the lightest areas, um, whether it's a detail or something like that. So we're gonna start off by drawing a rectangular shape and we're, we're gonna be trying to draw a, a sort of barrel shape um, that's going to have some horizontal lines on it. So I'm just doing a, a kind of a quite a crude rectangular shape to begin with. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect. And we're gonna have some horizontal lines, one at the top and one at the bottom. I'm using an HB pencil for this. Uh, I would suggest using a 2H pencil I'm using the HB pencil just so that we can see this on, on the actual video itself. So, when we have a rounded object, to make something look curved, we have to make sure that we've got the lighting right. So on something like this, this front part, the part that's closest to the light source is going to be the lightest. So I'm gonna start from this left-hand side and we're just going to start laying down our, our initial tapered strokes. Now if this is the first time that you've watched one of the videos, uh, this is lesson five now I think we're on. Go back and look at lesson one, have a look at lesson two, go through them in stages uh, and you'll understand what a tapered stroke is. So I'm laying down this tapered stroke now and I'm going to fade out to a lighter area here and it's gonna get slightly darker as it goes around the bend. So again, like I say, I would, I would personally start this off using the 2H pencil, but just for the purposes of the video, we are going slightly darker here. That doesn't mean you have to do that. Start with the 2H, get a, a light coverage down, and then start to work out towards the darker the lighter areas and then the darker areas on this right hand side. So the objective of this lesson is to understand again the curvature. This isn't a sphere like we did in the last video. Uh, this is going to be more of a cylindrical barrel type shape. Um, and also I'm going to show you how these dark areas, these dark bands are also going to get lighter and darker even though they're details. And that's going to be a very useful exercise for you in the coming weeks as we go on to starting our baby portrait next week. Now don't forget, I did put a post up on the Facebook group a couple of weeks ago. Um, you're going to need either a compass or something called a geared divider. You can find them, they're quite cheap, don't spend a fortune on one. Uh, mine cost me four pounds. But like I say, you can use a, a compass if you want to. Uh, and I'm going to teach you a method of, of plotting your drawing out so that we get accuracy initially. Um, again, it's the way that I learned to draw. People say, oh, can we go straight in and do freehand? Well, we could do, but it takes an awful lot of practice um, to, to be able to train your eye to see things for what they really are, exactly how they are. So. Um, I like to teach you methods that are going to train your eye and your brain to see things better in the future. Um, I'm quite happy going in and freehanding something, um, but I want to teach you the building blocks, the basics, so that we get things right, teach you the way that I learnt, and hopefully give you a good foundation to then go on and explore and experiment So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use some of my 2H now in this, because I do need quite a light area in, initially in this 
this region here. The uh, Facebook page is growing nicely, guys. So thanks for sharing that and being so active. Like I've said in previous videos, I I want to uh, teach you guys all how to draw the way that I've learned and show you some of the things that I've picked up. But it's really nice to see some of you giving advice and help and sharing some of your techniques and tips through your art journey. So don't forget, keep, uh, keep active on there, guys. Keep sharing your work, your homework. Uh, it's going to be really interesting once we start getting down to the portrait next week, which I'm really excited about. If this is your first time watching my channel, thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. Um, my wish with this Tutorial Tuesdays is to do some step-by-step -step drawing and have you draw along with me. I've done a lot of time-lapse videos. I've got nearly 300 videos up on the channel now, uh, ranging from anime to realistic drawings. And most of them were portrait works initially that were taking hours, so I time-lapsed them. And I had loads of comments saying from people, you know, really like the videos and, and they've watched them, but they'd like something a little bit slower and in real time. So initially I thought that people wouldn't want to sit through half an hour videos of, of me drawing, but um, that tends not to be the case. If you've not found the Facebook group yet, go and have a look in the search bar at the top on Facebook. If you go into groups and you type in Tutorial Tuesdays Beginners to Pro, ask to join that group and I'll, uh, I'll accept it. And on there we've got some really nice artists, some, some great work on there being produced. And I want, uh, I want us to all share their progress, their thoughts, their ideas. and really try and grow a, an artist group that people aren't afraid to share their work, even if they're a complete beginner. Um, like I say, I've been a member of many Facebook groups over the last few years, and most of them end up being politically orientated and not allowing people to put pictures up there of various politicians or uh, various pop stars and things like that and, and it ends up being traumatic in some instances for people with the comments and I just want to get away from that and there's a lot of people out there that want to learn how to draw uh, and we need to make mistakes in order to be able to draw and find our techniques. So I'm coming back in again now with my HB pencil and I'm just going to reinforce this left hand edge, which is always going to be my darkest edge here. As the curve goes away from the viewer, this is going to be the darkest area, whether that's somebody's hairline or it's a piece of clothing. So we need to keep reinforcing that. And again, I'm using this tapered stroke. I've, I've already got a layer down now. I've got some 2H in there. So I should now start to be able to fill out some of the white pitted areas in the paper. I'm going to give it a little brush in a second. Now I've got some value and some graphite down. Just going to brush some of that now. When we are brushing, a little bit like the technique that people use when they're using blending stumps, I like to brush from the darkest area into the lighter areas rather than vice versa. Um, and that way it just keeps my darkest area strong 
uh, and gives me some value in the lighter areas that I can then work with. If I want to remove some, I can. Uh, and that, that again, that is a technique that people use when they are using blending stumps or tissues. I haven't seen many people going from a light area into the dark with a blending stump or a tissue or a tortillion or a Q-tip. Okay. So as the light's hitting this, I'm going to have a, a slightly darker point here as well as the curve starts to go away. So I'm just going to start to bring some value into that. Now, one thing that this, this exercise is going to teach us is it's going to teach us the difference between a soft edge and a hard edge. A hard edge is where you see something obstructing the view. So maybe the top of a wall. This here is a hard edge against this. If I'd got a background here, this here is going to be a hard edge. That tricks the brain into believing that what it's seeing stops. So this is the end of the barrel. This is the end of the barrel. Now, this here, what you can see, what I'm starting to develop here, this is what we call a soft edge. We haven't got this abrupt line. Um, and when we have a soft edge, this tricks the brain into believing that what we're seeing is a curve. If you look at the sphere from, last, uh, from the last couple of lessons, uh, the hard edge is around the the side of the sphere. The soft edges are what go from the darker areas into the light source, into, or not into the light source, but into the area that the light is hitting. So it looks initially like as though what I'm putting down here is, an, is a hard edge, um, but I am gonna soften it out in both directions, but I'm just getting some initial value down. Again, I'd have started with a 2H pencil. Uh, I'm using a 4, uh, an HB, just so that you can see it. So I'm not spending 10 minutes getting a value down that's imperceptible on the video. Okay, I'm gonna give that a brush now. Okay. So I'm going to start to soften this edge off now. I'm using my 2H pencil for this. Now for those of you that are new to this, um, I don't use hundreds of pencils. I, I start with a 2H and I work up to maybe a 6B or an 8B. I know there's a, a multitude of pencils out there. Uh, the pencils that I use are Caran d'Ache Graph Wood. Again, when I first started drawing a few years ago, I got wrapped up in pencils, and if I buy a more expensive pencil, it's going to make my drawings this much better. Um, a good quality pencil is, is important, for sure, but it's not going to make such a vast improvement in your artwork um, that practice is going to do. So I'm pretty sure I could produce work of an equally good quality now with a slightly cheaper brand of pencil. That being said, pencils aren't too expensive. I mean, as far as hobbies go or interests go, spending 20 pounds on some pencils is not comparable to going to spending thousands of pounds on golf clubs. So um, it's all relative, I guess. But I use Graphwood pencils there. Caran d'Ache, made by Caran d'Ache, Graphwood. Um, I've tried the Faber-Castell, they're quite nice. Whichever brand of pencil that you do start to use, make sure that you practice with them and you get to know the ins and outs of them. And some brands of pencil will lay down differently. So for example, my Caran d'Ache pencils I would say that my HB is more like the 2B in the Faber-Castell. It's no fault of, of the pencil, it's just the differences I get in manufacturing. 
So experiment with them, but I really wouldn't advise chopping and changing too much. Um, I know there's a few of my friends over on various different groups that like to use a brand called Blick. Um, I'm obviously based in the UK uh, and they're hard to come by. I think it's an American brand. Um, I believe that they're really good. I've had, you know, some really good reports of of the brand. But I haven't used them. But like I say, I'm I'm happy enough with this brand of pencil now. So I don't really see myself changing too much. So I'm giving this another brush now. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to start to lighten up this, this edge here because I don't want this harsh line. We will talk about this in later videos, but when we're trying to draw anything realistically, we want to try and avoid as best as we can lines. Uh, unless there's a line there, maybe in in our, um, you know, there might be a pattern on somebody's clothing or something like that. Um, we certainly want to try and avoid lines as much as we can. So I'm coming in with my 2B pencil now. I'm reinforcing this darkest edge. Still using my tapered stroke. Still always pulling the pencil towards me. Never away, I'm not scribbling. And this 2B is laying down lovely now. I'm really getting into the tooth of the paper without having to press on too hard. Now, like I said, patience is obviously something that you have to learn. This has taken me so far 16, 17 minutes. So you can see that a full size portrait is going to take quite a while, but I'm sure you can start to see that this type of technique gives you so much control and allows you to produce some really quite fantastic pieces of work. Uh, I'm gonna come in a little bit with the 2B on this edge. And then as soon as I've got some 2B in here, I'm gonna start doing some of these horizontal lines and just talk to you about how the details themselves will have the shadowed areas and the darker areas and the lighted areas. So I'm gonna brush a little bit in. I'm gonna put a little bit of value tapering away from this edge here. And as you can see, it's just softening the edge. Like we've said, it's, it's not going to an abrupt end, which would signify to my brain that something is ending. It's the edge of a wall or the edge of the tail of the aeroplane or the the wheel on a car, the edge of the wheel. What I want is to make the brain believe that this is bending round slightly. It has a curve to it. And as long as you understand that, and you keep that in mind whenever you're drawing something, you'll always be able to create a sense of realism. I've not done a barrel for a long time, uh, probably two years. I've not even got a reference for this. So this is something that you can practice. Obviously, if you had a reference in front of you, you might pick up certain areas that the light's hitting differently, but 
we're just getting used to this idea that things that are rounded have dark areas and light areas but they are soft in their edges, the contour spreads around. Okay. So what I want to do now is I'm just gonna turn the paper around. Um, I'm going to start filling in this horizontal line at the top of the barrel. Now, as I'm doing this, this is the darkest area, this area here. So even though this stripe is going from dark to light, I need the stripe in this area to still be the darkest part. I need the stripe in the middle to be the lightest because that's where the light is hitting it. And then it's gradually going to get darker in this area here as it goes away from our line of sight. Now this could, for all intents and purposes, be lettering. It could be, you might be drawing um, a van with lettering on it. The same principles will apply. If you have a light point, everything on that point needs to be light. So I'm gonna come in with the 2B now. What you're also finding here is this is just, again, it's just another extension of the patchwork that we did in lesson one, where we were just practicing fading out and getting a feel for the pencil, being able to fade from dark to light. That's really what we're doing here. Uh, I'm going to come in with one at the bottom now. So again, this is the darkest area. This is the darkest line, if we want to call it that. This is going to be dark as well under here. I'm just using my HB pencil again, just laying down some more graphite. It's going in a different direction to what I've been doing. It's going sort of from left to right now, whereas the majority of this drawing has been done using up and down, well, the vertical strokes by turning the paper, not by doing anything differently. Now it's these subtle changes in shadow and light that if you get it correct, you're going to produce something that looks realistic and people are going to look at it and go, oh, is that a photograph or they need to do a double take. If you get it wrong, People look at it and immediately know there's something off. They might not be able to tell you exactly what it is. You know, it might need to be a, a trained artist that can go and pinpoint exactly what's wrong with it. Somebody that's been, you know, used to looking at light sources, a photographer maybe. But the layman will know something's off. So if we turn it back now, you can start to see that we are developing a curve. It's the greatest trick that you can do is to try and produce something that looks three dimensional on a flat piece of paper. It's what every artist is looking to, well, I guess some artists maybe aren't an abstract artist or you see these artists that are creating work with paint and splattering paint and whatnot. But I think if you're, if you're drawing, and certainly as a start point, learn to do this. If you then turn your hand to a different type of, of art, then fantastic. But you've always got a foundation. Um, and what I learned, or what I you know, started to soon realize, once I'd learned this principle, Everything that I looked at for the next six months, whether it be towers, trees, leaves, a football in the park, I was able to start to see 
this type of um, structure, if you want to call it that. So I was able to see where the darkest areas were, where the lightest areas were, and I, I was able to think to myself, okay, well, I could make an attempt at drawing that now and make it look slightly realistic. Um, and even to this day, I still look at it. One of the things that I initially noticed was if you go and have a look at outside at night time at the moon, and when we did our sphere, you can start to see that that shape, that look. Okay, I can see we're sort of getting towards the 25 minute mark and I do like to keep these videos down to about 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish the rest of this barrel uh, in time lapse. And um, I'll come out the other end of it, hopefully with something that is more complete. Welcome back guys. Yes, yeah, so I just time lapsed that. That took me about another 15 minutes uh, in total. I started laying down some uh, of the darker values, some 4 eight, 4B, sorry, uh, in this darkest area. Um, and as you can see, that the, even the details that we've got in the darkest areas, the details are going to be darker than the details in the lighter area. I used my kneaded eraser to pull out some of the, um, some of the lighter areas in that central part there and the light area that you can see on this right hand side uh, this is something called reflective light so we're imagining that the light source is, is maybe coming slightly front on um, or, or maybe slightly from this side again a little bit like the sphere but this side here is not as dark as this side because the light will be rebounding off of whatever is next to it so it might be another wall it could be um, you know a person that was st stood there uh, and light does that so it's going to rebound off of here so it's not going to be as dark as sorry it's going to be slightly darker than the area that's being reflected the most the the most reflective area um, but it is it's definitely still going to be a lighter area than this very dark line on this side so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'd love to see some of your barrel work over on the Facebook page. Don't forget it's called uh, Tutorial Tuesdays, Beginners to Artists. If you go and find that, that will be fantastic. I'll accept you into the group um, and we'll have a bit of a discussion and see some of your work. Keep layering. Uh, like I said before in the last video, art's never finished, it's just abandoned. So I'm going to abandon this in a second. Uh, I love drawing but uh, and I could probably spend another 20 minutes doing this, maybe even an hour, um, just really finishing it off and making sure that the darkest areas are the darkest areas uh, and the lighter areas are the lightest. But um, I think you get the gist of it. That's your last practice before we um, start with this baby. Um, if you want to print the reference off from the Facebook page, if you go into the photos section on the Facebook page, uh, it's the baby with his eyes closed. I think it's a boy, it might be a girl. Um, print that off uh, in A4 if you've got a printer and you can do that, fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we're going to plot it out next week. I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks for supporting the channel, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the Facebook page as well. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I've met some lovely people on there already. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to next week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.